we're going to take a look at kind of a strange result. So it says that if I take minus one and multiply it with some number a, I get minus a. I mean, this, is, this seems rather obvious, right? So what does this mean? Well, here, minus one, that is by definition the additive inverse of one. So minus one is the number such that if I add it to one, I get zero. Who is minus a? Well, minus a is the additive inverse of a, whoever a is. So this is the number such that when I add it to a, I get zero. So what does this equality say? Well, if I have my a, I multiply it with the additive inverse of one, then I get the additive inverse of a. So in fact, when you look at this statement, it is, from the point of view of the axioms, not obvious at all. So we need a proof. So proof. Um, and we're going to do it by a chain of equalities. So we begin at one side. Let's begin at this side here. And then let's move step by step to obtain that this guy here is equal to that guy. How do we do this? Well, a nice little trick is to add by zero. We can always add by zero. And the point is to, to write zero in a clever way. So let's do this. So here we have that guy. And now zero is the same as a plus minus a. Now this is a good move to make and because now we're getting minus a uh, into play here. And we can think of this as, as a game of chess in some sense. So when you have a game of chess, you don't know from move one what you're going to do exactly to beat your opponent. But your strategy, at least on a certain level, should be that every move you make uh, puts you a little bit closer to victory, puts you in a little better, in a little better position than what you were in previously. And this is what we've done here. So now I've gotten this guy into play. That was my objective until now. I don't really know exactly how this is going to play out. So what do I do next? Well, I can use an axiom to change these parentheses around a bit. So here I have minus one times a, and now I can move the parentheses around these two guys and then leave this guy out here in the cold. This is not something, I mean, when you, so when you're on the level of doing math where you don't really do this nitpicky thing of the axioms, you wouldn't perhaps write it like this, but this just means that here, I'm supposed to add these two guys together before adding the result of this product to whatever this became. But now I'm supposed to add these two guys together before I add the result to, well, this guy. So of course we know that when you add three numbers, you can add them in any which way you want. Anyway, so what does this give me? Well, what I can do now is see that, well, A is the same, same as one times A. So I can multiply by one here. So I can do this and then I can do this. And then I still have this guy here. And now instead of this parenthesis, I have A here and A here. So I can factor him out using an axiom. So this is the same as this times A plus minus A. But what happens here? One is the additive inverse minus one and vice versa. So this adds up to zero. So here I have zero times a plus minus a and zero times a, well that's zero. So here I have zero plus minus a, well adding zero to something, well you can just take the zero away. And there's my proof. Now I've been a bit sloppy here, so ideally I would put here uh, on every step which axiom I used when I took away the zero here, well, in the axiom, strictly speaking, the zero should be on the right side. So I have to use commutativity here. I skipped that, which we usually do. And then also I use the fact that zero times a is zero. So that's not an axiom, that's a result. So when doing this, you have to make sure that you've proven that result before so that you can refer to it. Yeah, but other than that, I would say good proof.